You know, I think actually family history is such an important thing. It's one of these things that we stress to the nth degree with our patients. So much so that, you know, it takes them weeks sometimes to gather the information that we want to know. Because we want to know, and we give them 10 questions for each member of the family. So your parents, your grandparents, your aunts and uncles, your siblings, like we want to know everything. Do they have high blood pressure? Do they have high cholesterol? Do they take this medication? Do they take that medication? What was their cognitive function like in the last decade of their life? You know, what type of cancers did they have? Did they have uh, low bone density? You know, do they have osteoporosis? I mean, we really want to understand every detail about it. And I think a big part of the reason why is contrary to what maybe people believe, a genetic test does not give you that information. So if, if you and I went out and got a genetic test, and I don't just mean an you know, over-the-counter genetic test like 23andMe, but I'm saying if we went out and got the best whole genome sequence money could buy, we spent thousands and thousands of dollars and literally looked at every one of our you know, 20 to 30,000 genes, we still wouldn't be able to impute from a risk standpoint what you can gather from a very well-collected family history. And the reason for that is most genes by themselves are not deterministic, which really gets to your second question. So if most genes are not deterministic, they need something in the environment to sort of trigger them. Furthermore, most conditions that we care about are polygenic. It's easy to think of the sort of Mendelian monogene type conditions. They get a lot of attention and they're important to be sure, but the vast majority of things that people care about, cancer, heart disease, dementia, they are not really just related to a single gene. And in many cases, we don't even know what the collection of genes look like. So genes matter, but I think we're going to get the majority of our information by understanding our family history in terms of susceptibility. And the environment matters greatly. And the extension of that is, of course, you have great agency over that. Yeah. And what is the best methodology for getting the family history in a complete, comprehensive way that's actually going to be It can be, be hard if members of the family are deceased. So for people your age and my age, you know, our grandparents, I mean, at least for me, my grandparents are long gone. Yeah, same. So it's, you know, do your parents really remember? And part of it, it just comes down to, are they being prompted by the right questions? Now, again, to be honest, in my family history, I have very limited understanding of grandparents because, you know, they just died long enough ago. And frankly, I don't think my parents were necessarily great historians of this. In my case, where the bulk of my understanding came from was that my dad came from a very large family. You know, there were 10 kids, two that died young, so eight that survived to adulthood. And there I was able to elucidate really good information and really understand that there's something very bad going on with respect to heart disease. 